So I made a few notes. That's why I'm looking at here. I've got a few notes that I've written down about things that I was talking about that I still want to say and talk about regarding the moon, etc. One of the biggest problems for getting to the moon is the Van Allen belts. And if you look back in time, and Bart Sabrell uh, talks about this quite eloquently in his book, that in the 50s, etc., they sent up probes, etc., into space and were measuring the amount of radiation up there. And they found that it, they thought there was radiation and then there was no radiation. And then there's radiation again or something. But I can't remember the exact way it went. But what it turns out was because their detector went up and then just dropped back down and then went up again. But what that was actually was that the radiation was so high that the detector couldn't detect it. And that's why it dropped back down. So it was really terrible amounts of horrible radiation going on up there. So that seems like a, a massive barrier to actually going to the moon. But I think um, in modern times, when they, they say that we can go to the moon because they know more about the Van Allen belts, and they say, and they say oh, it's, there's different kinds of radiation. And uh, what they said about how, the, how when people question them about how they get through the Van Allen bands, why well, there's so much radiation up there, knowing what was said in the 50s, etc. They said, well, they had ballistic projections, trajectories that went through the Van Allen bands quickly. I think it's going through very quickly. And a little bit that I read online, they said about the percentage of time. It took, it took four and a half days or something to get to the moon. And uh, the amount of time they went there, they said the percentage of time they went through the Van Allen bands was quite small. They never actually gave a time period. They just gave it in percentages. It's kind of weird. But anyway, that's what I found, but there might be more detailed information if you look for it. So that is what they say. Um, and that's how they combated the Van Allen bands, if you believe it. If you believe that the Van Allen bands are not that bad after all, whereas they thought they were really deadly before. Like I say, they say with their modern technology, they found out more about them and it's not as bad as they thought. It's different kinds of radiation. You know, how can you argue? You can't, you can't really argue with them because we, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I haven't got all that information. That's what they say. Not that I trust NASA particularly <laughs> when they've lost, because NASA said that they lost the all the... Why haven't they been back to the moon? And one of the reasons a NASA front man had come out and said, on film, it's on film, you can find it on the internet, etc., that they lost the telemetry data from going to the moon. They lost the telemetry data. That's such a weak excuse. What? Weak excuse, but it's just... That was apparently, you know, the biggest thing in, for mankind was the USA going and landing a man on the moon. You'd have thought they'd have kept everything pristine from that time to record and remember for posterity all of the details and the data regarding that. It would have been, I would have thought, the highest priority. And yet, oh uh, no, they lost it. And he said that they'd recorded over it because they tended to reuse tapes. So they just recorded over all the data. That seems the most ridiculous excuse. It's like the old one of going to school and saying your dog ate your homework. You know, what can you say? No one really believes it, but that's what they say. And <laughs> you just have to accept it, but you all know that it smells highly. It smells highly. So they lost the telemetry data. Unbelievable. It is un unbelievable, really, uh, that they wrote over it. But then, even so, we're now 50 years or more into the future. Why would they need that old data? They had the computing power of an old calculator, not even a modern calculator. They had the computing power of an old calculator that somehow they managed to work out this very difficult process of traversing space to get to the moon, which is, a you know, everything's moving, isn't it? 
and through the Van Allen bands and all the rest and get in there and how you land on the moon and get up off the moon again to reconnect and then come back you know wow this sounds extremely complicated to me so I'm not sure how they did it then and then they can't do it now because they lost the telemetry data that doesn't make any sense they should have much better well the computers now are you know indescribably in advance of what they had then uh, and it should be more than easy if they could do it back then it should be more than easy to do it now in a much better way and now they're going to send like I said, I think I said before, someone to the moon in, in 2027, I think it is. Apparently, no, that's right, but it's not people. They're just sending a craft first, just to make sure, get everything right. But they didn't do that really with uh, the Apollo mission. They just went one time and they got there. With a camp, you know, with something processing power in the calculator. So that, you know, excuse my incredulity, but that just all sounds not quite right. Ballistic trajectories. What uh, what proof do we have that they went to the moon? Well, what really hard evidence do we have? What they have, what they say they have, is all the, the video footage and the like 8,000 photos or something. And there's a, there's a dual thing to this as well. It's absolutely right if you look at the NASA photos and download them I don't know how much they've been changing them but you could download a lot and you could find that the photos have been messed with and some of them have like what look like false backgrounds or if you can because nowadays we have very good uh, programs for photographs like Photoshop etc and we can lighten up the images in certain places and all that sort of thing and people have found things that were hidden in the background or taken out there's definitely anomalies with the photos but again, I guess that goes with my with what I said before, my my thought that they would have staged it as well as going there. And so and obviously they want to filter out all the aliens and the ET craft along the way and UFOs. And so they'd need photos that were clean of that sort of thing. So it could have been some of that going on, to be fair. Um but all of the information we've got that is um, hard evidence is theirs. So if NASA are lying to us, I'm not saying they are. <laughs> That's for you to decide. I'm just giving out the information I can find and my opinion. But if they are lying to us, then obviously anything they give us is going to be fake themselves. You can't trust what they give us. So if we can't trust what they give us, what can what can we do to try and find out ourselves if they're telling the truth? So could we uh, see anything on the moon? Can we get a telescope, point it at the moon, and be able to zoom in enough to see you know the the rover or any stuff that's left on the moon, etc. And apparently, because um, I, I googled this. <laughs> well, the Google's your best friend, really, because it's so uh, restricted now. There's, you know, everything's everything's under control, isn't it? Anyway, but there's no powerful, no telescope that's powerful enough to see the Apollo rover on the moon from the Earth. It's just two hundred fifty thousand kilometers away, or whatever. It's so you can imagine. There's nothing powerful enough. Apparently, not even Hubble telescope could see what's on the moon. Not even the Hubble telescope. Uh, so we can't prove to ourselves that the stuff is on the moon that they said is there. Although I think, like I might have said, um, if we've got a secret space program and we've got craft that can go to the moon, they could easily have taken stuff up there and dropped it off. Or, the, or even if the people didn't go, they could have sent out missions that dropped stuff off onto the moon itself robotically so we can't prove it with a telescope uh, so also I've got here why doesn't Russia reveal ETs 
Well, so the Russians were first into space. They were the first to put anything into space. They were the first to put a man into space. And yet the Americans went and landed on the moon. And so why didn't Russia then land on the moon themselves afterwards? Why did they not be the second country in the world to land on the moon? That's a great coup, isn't it? Why did they not bother? Why did they stop everything altogether? They just didn't, didn't bother after that. Why is that? Why would you do that? Because right now we've got China who's landing rovers on the moon. India's going into space now and wants to land stuff on the moon. And China wants to put a person on there. Uh, are we now in, in, in a race for the next person on the moon between sort of us and Russia? Us. Or the Americans and Russia? Is it the Americans and, and China now? Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, obviously, there is a reason for science and technology to get onto the moon. If you've got a base on the moon, I think that's... Uh, it's quite a dominant thing to have, isn't it? Who's going to be the first country to have a base on the moon? Which is what they should have done in the first place, rather than building the ISS. I mean, what was the point of the ISS? It's very expensive to build. It's really tricky to keep it, to put it up there and to get people up there and then to ferry up their uh, goods and food and stuff, uh, you know, and all that sort of thing. Rockets that have to dock with it. And when they could have just, gone to the moon and started building a base on there. You, know, you could build warehouses and have stocks and learn how to grow food, how to produce air, and all these things that you'd need for further investigation into the rest of the solar system and beyond or whatever. Why, why would you build the ISS? That never made any sense to me. And that's just in low Earth orbit as well, isn't it? That's not actually in space space. Again, that's just like low Earth orbit. So it's all very odd. That didn't make any sense. Now they're saying they're going to build a base on the moon, have people on there, and that will be a staging post for going to Mars. Well, I thought that years ago. Uh, why they didn't do that in the first place. The ISS never made any sense to me. So we have an agreement with, there's an agreement with Russia and other people to have the ISS and they share space up there. Share space up there. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Um, so, if they didn't go to the moon, Russia would absolutely 100% know that they didn't go to the moon. So if they didn't go to the moon, why hasn't Russia called them out on it? Why haven't they showed data, photography or video or whatever, to show that they never went to the moon and landed a man on the moon? They've kept very quiet on that. And along that line of thinking, there are some videos on the internet. I might put a link to one below if I find it. There was a good one I saw not long ago. That if you look at all of the space agencies and all of the private enterprises that are to do with space, you know, private industry, they all have somewhere in their logo a delta symbol. There's a delta symbol or something else that they all share. All of them. I would have thought, if I was Russia and, you know, I was in competition with America to go to the moon, and I had a logo for my space agency, I'd make damn sure it was nothing like the American one. And you think you'd do that with other countries, but no, everybody's got the Delta symbol in there. What's so special about the Delta symbol? What does that mean beyond what we know a Delta symbol is? which I can't, I didn't write that down, so I haven't got that information. But I do know, but I've forgotten. Uh, so a vector, delta or vector, is like a vector. A V, it's not a V shape, it's a delta symbol. V, v for vector. Um, in mathematics, of course, you have a vector. They've all got that in there, pretty much all of them, and maybe very, very few that haven't. If not, they've got this other symbol. I can't remember what it is. I think. 
So that's a lot of space agencies. You know, you've got Japan, India, China, Russia, America, all, all of them. So it does show to me, I think other people have said, that at some level, when it comes to space, they are all together. There's something they're all in on. There's something they're all... Russia should be pointing out that they didn't go to the moon if they didn't. And also, Russia should be... Why isn't Russia showing us all the information about UFOs and UAPs showing up in America? Why, why are they not going to be the first to do that? If they're such big enemies, why are they not doing that? It really doesn't make sense. If you're arch enemies, not only in a race for technological dominance and the dominance of having a base on the moon, why are they not pointing these things out? That's very interesting. I mean, from my perspective, I know that ETs exist, crafts exist, they're here, we've always been here. Uh, of course, they've been around with us, a lot of them, and the space is full of them. Now, I know that personally. So for me, from my perspective, I know that Russia knows that they're everywhere and they're all up there. I know that NASA and the US know that. And we're playing, the, there's a game going on at the moment with the, the USA and Disclosure, which isn't happening. They're just playing with it, just toying with it. But they're getting people used to the idea, perhaps, of ETs. I don't know what, but it's still, I don't know, I'm not going to get into all that. But then Russia should be pointing out, but they're not. So they're all connected at some level. So they're all buddying up at a much higher level. And the higher level is space. Now, literally, it's higher. Space and ETs, these are the two things everyone's staying stum about pretty much those that have the absolute technology and the absolute capability of knowing and they know and being able to show people but they're not why are they quiet that is the really one of the biggest questions for me why are they quiet is it because they have contact with some ets and they're being told to keep it quiet because what, what is above the countries? The countries are enemies, let's say, and they're fighting with one another and the technological race, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, and so they could release this information and have one up and ship on each other quite easily. But what is above them that's keeping them quiet? Something that's more powerful than the most powerful countries on the planet is putting a dampener down. And it can only be ETs themselves. Yeah, so what is above all of the major countries on the planet? That's the power to keep them quiet and stop talking about space, about the moon, about ETs. And you could say it's the cabal the human cabal, uh, but as you know, you can't say that it's. Not, I can't say that it's not, but there is a human cabal. But there seems to be, or that in my view, there has to be an ET cabal. I don't know how that looks or how that is working or what the. I have maybe have some idea of how that's working, the structure of that, perhaps. But there is something going on of that nature that is stopping everyone from being able to speak out about it because all these countries, they don't get on. Right? That's what we're seeing. And some people say, oh, well, the countries, they do get on, really. All these wars is just bullshit. I don't believe that. I think um, not the too much death and destruction and uh, economic devastation. No. No, they're all being kept quiet from a much higher group. And it's not, why would a human cabal want them not talking about ETs? They would be suppressed, again, from something further up, 
which would be ET. It always goes up, up to the top. That is my personal opinion. And I do have some ideas or experience that points to that being a possible fact. So that's uh, going to leave you hanging with that one. You can make your own mind up, but when you think about it, so if you look into why nobody's talking about it, if you don't know if ETs are real or not, or if they're all around or if they're not, or if UFOs are real or not, then that's going to be another bullshit statement perhaps. But if you know, if you're watching this, you might do, then you want to think about it. Think about why other powerful countries are not getting one up and shit and why they're not talking about other countries not doing stuff and not releasing stuff because that would be a coup wouldn't it and if you look at all their say space agencies um logos etc do that just start looking into it and you'll you'll get you hopefully will come to a similar conclusion that there is something coming together at the top and i say it's pressure because they don't like each other these countries there's the West and there's the BRICS nations now. And uh, everything has some control over it. I'd say it goes up and up and up. Um, so we have, what, what other evidence do we have that we went to the moon? That really, what I just talked about really surpasses all of that really, doesn't it? But anyway, let's stick with the moon. So there are mirrors and seismometers. Mirrors that reflect back lasers. Apparently we shoot lasers at the moon as a mirror that reflects it back and they time how long it takes to go from one to the other so they can judge the distance and how far away the moon is. And over time, whether it's how much farther away it's getting and at what speed, etc. And size monitors, that's how they measure the ringing like a bell. So even if the, um, the stages of the Apollo missions weren't the cause of the ringing, there may be other things that cause a ringing of the moon. They might have exploded missiles on the moon. I did see a video once about uh, someone saying that they were, um, it might have been from the Disclosure Project, someone saying that they were, sh who was in charge of ballistic missiles and testing them. And he said that they've got videos of UFOs disarming ballistic missiles and they were intending to blow up a ballistic missile on the moon's surface, which they might have done, but they were stopped from doing it anyway. They might have managed to do it once, maybe. But that could be how they got the um, information about the ringing like a bell from the moon, without it being the stages of the Apollo mission. Or it could be meteorites that hit the moon. Uh, so, how do we, but we can't see those. And that, again, they could have been dropped off there robotically. By other missions we are you know, there's a public face to nasa isn't it and then the space race there's a public face and there's a hidden face a private face and so they put a lot of things into space more than what they show us on the television or on the news about satellites you know they're doing all sorts of stuff sending stuff up into space so they could easily have sent them at any time with robotic arms to place stuff on there, for all we know. And then there is the case of, uh, it's quite funny, a little bit funny, the moon rocks. So they had a couple of hundred moon rocks apparently gathered from the moon, whether it was apparently by the astronauts or whether it was scooped up by something else, but I think it's supposed to be the astronauts that scooped them up. And they've been handing them out to dignitaries and uh, countries, etc. And Netherlands, which is Holland, for those who don't know, the Netherlands, they um, they analysed their moon rock and found that it was um, petrified wood. It wasn't a moon rock at all. <laughs> and that was given to them by Neil Ar Armstrong. Neil Armstrong gave it to them. And so that's raised quite a few questions. And apparently a lot of the moon rocks have gone completely disappeared. Absolutely completely disappeared. I, lots of them were given out and uh, not many that of them remain. 
uh, but that one in particular, so you can make of that what you will, and there's all sorts of excuses why they've all might have disappeared, you know, not shown up and been sold on the black market or something. They gave a lot to countries, you know. And the Netherlands one was petrified wood. So it wasn't a moon rock at all. So that's kind of dubious. What's going on there? Uh, maybe someone can dig into that story and find out a bit more. So where am I on the, on the moon? <laughs> I'm not on the moon. Well, maybe I was on the moon. Who knows? But um, and going to the moon and landing on the moon, I, uh, I'm i sceptical. I'm very sceptical. Like I said, there's two stories. If we landed on the moon, I quite like the idea of them seeing aliens on the moon warning, warning them off. That is quite a likely scenario, that we are not really allowed in space too far. And we don't, you know, we want to claim the moon. No, no. The moon's already been claimed. <laughs> the moon actually belongs to someone else. I think on the Cosmic Agency uh, YouTube channel, what they say that I get and say is that it's a, uh, I think an Andromedan spacecraft, that they make lots of massive spacecraft. And their space, spacefaring uh, species don't have a home planet anymore. They just live in space and have these massive, massive ships. And uh, the moon is one of their old ones or something. That's what they say. I don't know. You don't have to believe that. I don't know if I believe that or not. But it's certainly very interesting, the moon. And it's certainly very odd. The way it wasn't there looking like in history, according to ancient peoples, who didn't have light pollution like we have today and look at the pollutant sky constantly at night. And they're pretty aware of what's up there and what's not. A lot more than we are nowadays. And they, there's a lot of them that say it was a time before the moon, and I believe them. So maybe it is an Andromedan ship, or maybe it's not an Andromedan ship, but maybe it's something else. But it's certainly very odd. Uh, so, and did we go to the moon? I think I'm not convinced by their Van Allen Band explanations when before it was so sure. Also, I think Werner von Braun, who was doing the calculations for going to the moon, he said, we could never go to the moon. This is before we went. He was a man in charge of it. And he said, no, we can't go to the moon because the amount of fuel that you'd have to have in order to take you to the moon and get back again will be so much, be so heavy, that it won't get off the ground, won't get off the earth in the first place. You know, the, the mathematics don't work out. You can't get there with fuel. There's not enough of it. Or the amount, the amount you need is too much. You know, we can't get it up there. So it's just not possible. And then he changed his tune and all of a sudden we went, which was a bit suspicious. But I think that kind of information is also in Bart Sabrell's book and video. So I highly recommend looking at that. There's loads of information in there. There are some dodgy photos from NASA and dodgy videos. And that could be, of course, that we did go, but also, I'm also convinced that even if we did, at the time, they would have had a backup system. And there's a movie, Capricorn One, and that was basically, I think it was written originally about the moon, about the fake moon landing. But someone bought the rights to it and um, they had to change it to be about Mars. And it's about Mars and not about the moon. So that's interesting. I need more evidence. I need to see us go to the moon again, that's for sure. Although, what evidence, would I believe what evidence they give me? I'll be very sceptical of any evidence that they give me. They give us, as populations, about them going to the moon and being on the moon and making moon bases. A lot of people say there's a whole conspiracy thing about, doing it. does anyone really go to the ISS? They think they're underwater. All the training for space is underwater. Uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting. If you look for videos of that with green screens for the ISS, I think I think they do use a green screen, but I don't know. Uh, that's another thing to look into. I'm not going to go into that. But that is my videos about the moon. I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, feel free to leave comments below. Uh, what you think? What do you think? Did we go or didn't we go? 
And uh, if you know any more details about any of the information, it's always nice to know and share with everyone. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing and uh, give it a like and share it with people that you know that might be interested in seeing this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.